Oh no, I've got a leak. I've got a leak. Walking in the woods and snowshoes. Nobody is out here, just me, the snow of the animals, with the potential storm coming in. The buds are still dormant. Oh, what an experience. The purity of being out here, enjoying what we've given to experience all this is just such a blessing. Well, this looks like the uh, best of a lumpy situation, so what I'm going to do is bust out my shovel, start moving the snow around to level the side out. It'll make it a lot easier, otherwise sleeping on a slope is super unpleasant. I don't want to do that. I'm going to start my pack here and uh, break out the old shovel. Of course, that is buried way low in an undesirable location. That's okay. This is one of the problems is digging all this stuff out in the winter. Very easy to lose your gear. So really the only thing I'm gonna do is get out my tent very carefully and get my shovel out. There we go. Ah catching baby. Whew, that's hard pack snow. And critically, drink some water before I get started. So I'm going to start shoveling around with my little Deploy 7 or Deploy 3 shovel. Do a little bit of leveling work, make my life a lot easier. These little snow stakes. Make sure once it gets to dusk where the sun's just about to touch the mountainside, don't wait till it gets dark to fumble out and get your headlamp. Get your headlamp ready well early. Just put it around your neck because once it starts getting dark and you're fumbling around in the pack, the last thing you want to do is be looking for that headlamp. Thing it didn't soak everything. Classic. But definitely have a place for everything and everything in its place. If at all possible. And try and keep the snow out of the tent. And get your knees off the snow. So you can start unloading the pack. Knowing that eventually it's going to get cold outside.
Because as soon as you can undo your sleeping bag, let it start expanding, better off you'll be because it'll be all expanded. And it continues to expand while you're cooking dinner. With the air mattress, do not just toss the bags anywhere. Put them in your sleeping bag, and you'll immediately know where they are, how to find them, and life will be much, much easier. Okay. Yeah, that'll be about right. Good. And then I keep my liner glove right here in my jacket. So I know where it is at all times, and it stays warm. Never set these things down, ever. Next thing is to get the stove working here. One of the things that uh, you have to be careful about is handling bare metal with gloves. You gotta be careful about that. But in the same respect, you do not want to fire up the stove while holding anything with your gloves because I have melted my gloves before, and that sucked. Those clamp either, and don't put this in the snow. Every mistake I made dipping this guy in the snow. <laughs> yeah, that was a hungry night. And also, when you're handling the fuel, do, yeah, there's two schools of thought. Handling the fuel with gloves and without gloves. I don't want fuel on my gloves. So, there's the risk of frostbite though, with handling fuel with your gloves off. Frostbite's bad. Gloves on fire and melted gloves are at least just as bad. So what I do is I strive not to put my hand in the fuel, and that's uh, it's not easy sometimes. So you can watch me if I make a mistake. Be one of those YouTubers. Rumblers where you can get, oh gosh, oh my gosh. Look at that stone in just the right place and it's not staying. And the other, whoa, oh no. Oh no, I've got a leak. I've got a leak. Like a complete leak. Oh my gosh. Hmm. I just had a failure. Leak. I'm going to have to wait for the fuel to dry. And I'm going to suffer. That's awesome. Oh boy. And this sort of thing just happens sometimes. So normally, like in Denali, I bring two spare pumps because of this. But you never, never know what's going to happen. Your fuel ball is covered in fuel. Blow on the bottle. And that will actually dry all the fuel off. It makes you a little lightheaded, but... Drying this bottle is important so you don't get fuel all over the place. Yeah, I hear it. I literally checked this thing at the house. Oh man, that sucks. It was a check valve that failed. This guy wasn't uh, doing its thing, it was just uh, somehow in alignment. And I uh, put it back in. And it seems to be pumping okay, but definitely get home. I'm gonna replace this whole pump. And if the check valve failed, that's definitely a bad sign, but Always got to put a little bit of grease on that thing. All right. And click it over. And voila. 
Got the stove set up. Now, hopefully, I don't have a fireball. And I want it as level as possible. Fuel all over the place. And now, we'll see if Mr. Sparky gets the job done. And we don't have a catastrophic failure in the fireball. That would suck. Come on. There we go. Oh yeah. Flame on, baby. <laughs> You do not want to breathe carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is bad, people have died. Definitely plenty of ventilation. Open this up. Yes, it's windy and cold, but carbon monoxide is bad. Really? And while you're doing that, you want to stir up your food as much as possible so you don't have that nasty spice ball that always happens. Mmm. Frozen cheese. Love it. Normally I don't bring lasagna because it gets the spork all cheesed up. Oh, gosh, that snow's dirty. <laughs> yep, and it's a good time as always. <laughs> Cheesed up, having valve failure, dirty snow. <laughs> oh, just pray that this is the only thing that goes wrong. It's uh, dark at not uh, very late. It's going to be a long 12 hours until sunrise. <laughs> Oh, geez. Well, good times. That's why you come out here and do this, right? Man, so I just put the, uh, put the food in the bag here. As you can see, hopefully. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. And then let it be warm. And then... Oh. <clears throat> Set my watch for... 10 minutes timer there. Put my gloves back on. Oh, actually, the stove's probably cooled down. You could probably mess with this. It's, yeah, it's already cooled off. Well, so you've got your phone and it's super cold. You don't want to take your gloves off. How do you make things happen on your phone? Well, you use your schnoz. Just pull it up. Your nose works pretty well. You start doing this. <laughs> all right, so you just keep going. Closed all the apps. I have no signal, so I'm not going to be able to let anybody know. But I've got my Garmin in reach. I'm going to send a message just to let everybody know I'm doing okay. It's always a good thing to have. All right, got my Garmin in reach. I'm going to fire this up. Still waiting for the stove to cool off. Oh, yeah, fire this bad boy up. Since I don't have any cellular connectivity, I'm going to let it connect. Wait for it to connect here, and then uh, as soon as it does, I'll send the AOK -okay message and uh, wait for that to happen. Now, I put this valve on the plastic. I shake it. I don't contaminate my snow. Yeah, see the stone was up. 
I would never get fuel in that. That's the one failing of this entire system. I set that down just for a moment. I make sure to put this cap on. And then again, all right, give it a good minute and a half shake. Oh yeah, go crazy. You can't shake this thing enough. The more carbon you get out of there, the better your stove works. And this is especially important at altitude because let me tell you, once your stove starts failing at 14,000 feet or 17,000 feet or wherever you might be, you're gonna be crying, people. And then, chain this back in here. I protect the valve. Put that in there. And put my handy dandy clamp in here too. So my kit is completely protected. And I seal that bad boy up. Out, any gloves on because I do not want to contaminate my gloves with food, which over time sounds like not a big deal, but if you get some bacteria growing on there, you will be hurting. I had uh, one of my other subscribers ask me about cleaning dishes and things, and what I learned is I test food that does not require cleaning. I've kind of given up on pot cooking because Cleaning a pot is just such an intensive activity. So yeah, just a little toilet paper scraping here. It's not gonna be perfectly clean, but it's certainly better than it was because I do have to use a spoon in the morning for my cold cereal. Backpack momentarily, but boy oh boy, cannot emphasize enough. Now, toothpaste, I've never had toothpaste go unusably solid, just incredibly viscous and if it's too, Cold, put it in your jacket in your armpit. Yes, you're putting your toothpaste in your armpit. I know that's gross. Yes, I do floss too because I don't want any problems with my teeth. It's already tougher as you get older. I don't want it more tough. I've known some climbers who don't do anything and uh, say it's they're hard to be around because the breath becomes quite toxic. I don't know how many times I have to go to the dentist, but uh, boy, oh boy. <laughs> yes. I thought once I film the process, I'll just blur out whatever looks rude. Right. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Have your socks ready. Right. It's a little underwear. Oh yeah. <laughs> what I do is I put them together just at the calf cuff here. Here, the calf cuff. Guess that's the official name, right? Okay, and then I just keep these in my sleeping bag and in the leg zone to uh, make sure they dry overnight. Got my liner gloves in my jacket the whole time. So they are warm. I knew where they were. I'm ready to go to keep my skin from being exposed. And keep my exp skin exposure down to the bare minimum. That prevents the cracks. I've had horrible problems with that over time. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Ah. And now I line up my shirt. I do not wrinkle it up, but I keep it away from the zipper side. Ah. Now, I'm not going to leave my headlamp up there. So when I sleep, instead of Putting my headlamp somewhere, never do that. Instead, what you do, save yourself a lot of heartache, is instead of setting it somewhere, 
simply drop it around your neck. And then at night, you 100% know where your headlamp is. And you have no problems. Just put it around your neck. Sometimes you get choked out. But it's better than digging 10 minutes, especially when you got to use the, oh, the toilet. Whew. Boy, so. Uh. <laughs> oh, the long night ensues. Alright, there we go. Ah, good night everyone. Ah, that's uh it's four thirty AM. Yeah, good times. Just uh gotta get, wake up again and go to the bathroom. That's pretty normal when it's super cold. Gotta get a drink here. Well, it's, uh, just clocking through the night, not doing too bad. A little bit breezy outside, but uh, good times. Um, yeah, pretty normal. I accidentally turned on the camera and woke myself up, scared myself. Ah, what is that? Dude, it's because the video was playing. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, all sorts of weird things happen. You start to... Oh, yeah, that's pretty loud. And you start to... It's a little steamy on the lens. You start to hear things. Snow falls on the tent or your backpack. And you think, oh my gosh, there's an animal. Of course, there's, there are no crevasses out here. But then I think... Well, I was dreaming about Denali. And worrying about crevasses opening in front of the tent or under the tent. And dreaming about being in the Arctic and having ice break up and around you and all sorts of things happen in your head when you're out here it's kind of weird it's a fun experience though <laughs> oh, oh gosh good times all right i'm gonna get a drink of water here and try and get some shut eye for another hour i probably won't go back to sleep usually when i wake up like this <laughs> A good night's sleep. <laughs> <coughs> oh, yeah. Raven's waking me up, calling all over the place. Oh. Woo, <laughs> all sorts of crazy dreams. Oh. You never know uh, what happens in your head. At night out here, you think you hear uh, wolves padding around because I have been surrounded by wolves in Yellowstone before. That was pretty exciting with my uh, expedition partner, Terry. We wrote Adventure Expedition 1, but in writing that, I never thought I'd actually get truly surrounded by wolves. Fortunately, they didn't do anything other than checking us out, but that could have been exciting. Socks. Oh, dry and warm. <laughs> and I put them in my jacket to warm them up even more. Oh, baby. Make sure not to leave your pants inside out. Because one of the goals is if you're doing multi-night camping or mountaineering or whatever, you do not want to set yourself up so that at night you end up with a big struggle and just kind of wrap it around me use it as a blanket but in doing so I actually add a little bit of heat to the equation and then, oh, that's comfortable. Oh. So I use as a blanket, but I put it on me just so there's a little bit of air moving on as I'm wriggling around. But the heat from my body will help dry out the sleeping bag 
So I didn't end up with a wetter sleeping bag than when I started. Thank you very much for watching my video. Winter camping solo. No campfire, stove failure, zipper failure. <laughs> Lots of fun in the winter. My name is Aaron Linstow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please check out links below in the description to all the items featured in this video, plus my books, Antarctic Tears, Lost in Winnie Corner, Adventure Expedition One, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, the Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, the most crucial knots to know, and the 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, as well as check out my show, Antarctic Tears, where I take you solo to the South Pole for three months. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to help me out. Take care.